Well, welcome back to the show. April is National Foot Health Awareness Month with warmer weather. There comes a chance uh, for footwear to kind of figure into everybody's mm -hmm. day and getting outdoors. That's right. A great friend of the show, uh, Dr. Mitchell Waskin, is back with us today to talk about what steps you can take. Steps? Yes. I got that one. Yeah. Keep your feet healthy <laughs> all year long, especially during this break. Hey, doctor, welcome back. Great to see you, nice my friend. To see you. All welcome right. To see um, you. We have uh, quite a different uh, number of demonstrations right here, but there have been so many people that have been sedentary over the course of the wintertime. Right now, people are trying to get back outside. Uh, should there be a set of preps that we should be doing before we kind of go full bore? Yeah, a few things. First of all, if you have foot problems that you already know about, uh, take care of them or go to your doc um, so it doesn't become a problem getting out and being active. Uh, everyone needs to be flexible, which means uh, get out there and do a little stretching first, maybe take a yoga class, uh, that'll help decrease some, some injuries. And, uh, and then obviously some people just have the potential to have uh, certain problems uh, when they get out. Uh, for example, it might be a, a diabetic person who perhaps maybe they've lost a little feeling in, in their feet, so therefore if they're gonna be active, you wanna make sure that they're wearing the right shoes so it doesn't damage their, their feet. What are the three, uh, I know there's like three or four different areas that you're really concerned about with people, with their feet, that they, what's the number one problem people come well, in? Probably the number one problem that we see, especially with people getting active, is heel pain, oftentimes mm -hmm. called plantar fasciitis. Anyone who has it will know it. You get out of bed in the morning and those first few steps, you're just tiptoeing around, it hurts so much. That actually is a problem that why sometimes goes to surgery in, in our clinic, 95% of the time can easily be treated with conservative treatment. So if you have that problem, you, would, you really want to come in and get it treated because it's something simple. And obviously if you have things like deformities, people have bunions, that uh, kind of big bump that you might get on the side of, of the foot mm -hmm. um, or hammer toes when these toes get bent up. Uh, things like that, you'd want to wear things that can accommodate it, shoes that don't rub on it or little pads. Um, or again, the, it can be corrected, which involves surgery. So there's just things like that, most of which can really be taken care of simply. Mm. Um, it, it, it's, it's not that involved and, and you can really stay active. It just may, may take a little trip to your doc's office to take care of the problem. Dr. Waskin, what sort of inserts do you recommend? What kind of shoes do you recommend as well? And not just grabbing something off of the shelf because they, they look nice. Yeah. First of all, the great majority of problems that we see are functional problems. The foot is really complicated. Over one quarter of the bones um, are, are in, our, in our feet. So one quarter of all of our bones yeah. are in the feet? There's over 50 bones in, in both of our feet and there, and there are over 60 ligaments and tendons, or actually there's hundreds of ligaments and tendons, Lots over, 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 over 60 yeah. joints. Yeah. So it's really complex structure, but most of it be, can be taken care of just by controlling the function. So we'll do it with something like foot orthotics. Think of it as, a, as like a custom shoe insert or custom arch support that can be made to control the function of your foot and they can be made for doing sports, they can be made for dress shoes, um, they even have diabetic ones that can be made. And then of course having that in the correct shoe. For example, you see two shoes here. This is, is actually a diabetic athletic shoe, just like any other, other athletic shoe. You never really know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, so do you they sell these the at the shoe store? Or? These typically, the diabetic versions, usually you, you would need to get a specialty store. I mean, in our clinic, we, we have a section here um, that, that sells these and, um, and a person that fits them. And, and then you can get more of a, a regular runner's shoe. Mm -hmm. uh, and you want to make sure that you go to a place where they know how to fit a, a, a shoe. Um, but you want it to be firm in the back. You want it to, when you press up, have the toe come up just a little bit, but not collapse, because you need to have that support that, that, that's in there. And of course, lightweight. So and I do have this brand, uh, and, and the reason I got it was this arch support right here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it helps tremendously. Absolutely. If you have a basically normal structure foot, you mm -hmm. look at your foot and have a normal structure, you can get a, base, a basic running shoe that just has good arch support in it and you don't need anything else. If you have a flat foot mm -hmm. or a foot that has a high arch, well that's when you may want to go and get an orthotic that you put in your running shoe. So increase your flexibility, wear proper shoes, get shoe inserts if, if you need it, and if you ha have existing problems, go see your doc because most of them can be taken care of pretty simply complicated thing, the foot. So obviously there's lots of different problems. You gotta to talk to the doctor and figure out mm -hmm. which one works for you. Absolutely. Doc, thanks so much. We learn something new every day. 50 yeah. bones in the foot. Wow.